Many people within the gaming industry have speculated that the whole environment has worsened of sorts, as game developers that are growing larger and larger by the day are concerned with pleasing investors over consumers. This is a well-founded concern as many AAA titles every year get released half-finished due to publishers setting unrealistic deadlines. There is, however, one AAA developer that is particularly famous for their unwavering pro-consumer values and their determination to always serve the gaming community with perfectly polished and finished games. They've built an impressive portfolio of RPG games and have garnered a large, dedicated community behind them. This is the story of CD Projekt Red, the darling of the gaming industry. So before CD Projekt Red had been established as a company, their prospective founders, Mochina Winsky and Mikhail Kaczynski, began as video game distributors. In 1989, Poland was transitioning from a communist regime into a constitutional republic. During the reign of the Communist Party, freedoms over the internet were largely absent due to censorship, meaning the video games were quite limited in Poland. Owinski and Kaczynski jumped into the market gap that presented itself and began selling cracked western games during their high school years. Poland developed into a market-based economy over the next few years, and as the economy was booming, the two game sellers decided to start their own company. They wanted to convert their love for video games into a business, with dreams to develop their own games. In 1994, CD Projekt was created, and their first point of calling was localization and distribution. Poland's video game scene began to develop, and so Owinski and Kaczynski decided to localize English games into the Polish language. They hired prominent Polish voice actors to do so. Their most successful sold game that they distributed was the Polish version of Baldur's Gate, a top-down RPG developed by Bioware. CD Projekt's new relationship with Bioware was going to continue for the next decade as CDP chased their dreams to develop their first game. Their sales and localizing of Western games gave them the initial funding they needed to start development of a game. The founders were passionate about creating a game for a particularly prominent book series within Poland. Andrzej Sapkowski, a Polish author, had written a widely known book series within Poland. The franchise was named Wiedzmin, or The Witcher, a fantasy series about a professional monster hunter named Geralt of Rivia. It was very comparable to Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, a rich world with its own races, languages, cultures, geography, history and in-depth stories. The books are also renowned and well known within Poland, as is Lord of the Rings for many western countries. CD Projekt were keen to create their first title based on the successful book series. They paid a flat fee license to create Witcher style games for around 9500 US dollars. This was an incredible deal for CDP, but was going to cause a few issues down the line, but we'll get to that later. In 2002, game development started, and for the next five years, it was absolute chaos. There were too many ideas and visions on how the game should be. On top of that, many of the 100 people who worked on the project had never developed games before. The market in Poland for game developers was almost non-existent, as video games themselves were almost non-existent in Poland. The last problem was that the game was originally being developed as a top-down RPG, similar in appearance to Diablo. They had to scrap this as ideas flew around, until they settled on the third-person, over-the-shoulder viewpoint. Nonetheless, it all came together on October 26th, 2007 on its release, at the rough expense of over 6 million US dollars. It enjoyed some decent success and reviews, and gave them enough capital to immediately begin the development of The Witcher 2, Assassins of Kings. CDPR did actually have an expansion planned for the first Witcher, called White Wolf. However, this too had a disastrous development phase and was cancelled as a result. Their next work, The Witcher 2, was a much smoother development, that is, until this guy showed up. The GFC, as well as the complications behind The Witcher, White Wolf, were crippling the cash reserves of the company. To stay afloat until The Witcher 2 was released, they had to sever other developments. 
This included the creation of Red Engine 3, the new powerful engine they were going to use for The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. They postponed this creation until later. CDPR held out until the 17th of May 2011, and the game released with fantastic early sales and a great reception. It received 50 game awards on release and sold 1.7 million units in the first two weeks. This game began to set the tone for CDPR about their attitude towards game development. Firstly, that they were going to become the masters of open world, story rich RPGs, and two, that they would delay the release date in exchange for a better launch. The Xbox version of The Witcher 2 was delayed from August 2011 to April 2012 due to distribution issues and a need to polish the game up. Delays to CDPR games were going to become more common in the years to come. CDPR used DRM on The Witcher 2, but it had no stopping power against rampant piracy of their game, and actually made the game slower. They since have released their future games DRM free with wired localization options to reduce the need for piracy, as their games are available to many different countries. They also sell their games at a fair price, so the customer feels like they're getting great value, which removes the need for them to pirate the game instead of buying it. This talk of DRM brings us to the elephant in the room, GOG, or good old games. CD Projekt learned from their first two games that DRM potentially wasn't an effective method of dealing with piracy. CDPR was also born out of game distribution and localizing games into Polish. They decided to create their own game distribution platform similar to Steam. The business model of GOG is to sell DRM free, localized, cheap games with an easy buying experience. The games also tended to be old, classic games that other services did not have due to the hassle of chasing down who has the distribution rights to these very old games. This presented a great challenge for the company. Nonetheless, the business model works and is generally well received by the community. As the original and second Witcher games were rather successful, CDPR became a company where the community had high expectations about the quality of their future games. This expectation mounted a huge amount of pressure for their next title. CDPR opened the runway to develop their biggest title by a long shot, a monstrous addition to the trilogy, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. It turned out that at least CDPR could count to three. The line is triple kill. Triple, three, as in you've killed three heroes. I don't understand. You've killed more than two people and less than four. Just before The Witcher 3's development, it is worth mentioning that two other small titles were made. CDPR delved briefly into the mobile MOBA base with Witcher Battle Arena. The servers, however, closed within a year. They also made The Witcher Adventure game, a tabletop digital board game, however this game too has not been awfully successful. These two games were just a footnote in the history of CDPR, and this leads us back to The Witcher 3. The development stage for The Witcher 3 was crazy too, but not because it wasn't organised, the scale was unimaginable. The Witcher 3 was planned by CDPR to be approximately 35 times bigger than The Witcher 2 in terms of dialogue, length, quests, map size, mechanics, and more. To fulfill this huge project, over 500 people in-house and outsourced were part of production. Over 500 voice actors were also needed for the 450,000 word script in 15 languages. To give some perspective, the average movie script length is around 15,000 words, meaning The Witcher 3's script was the equivalent of 30 feature films long. The voice acting took two and a half years to complete, while the full development of the game took three and a half years. This is where we come back to CDPR's habit of delaying games. The original release date was planned for late 2014, then it got moved to February 2015, then finally to May 19th, 2015. But it would be a fair statement to say that the delays were worth it, both for the consumers and for CDPR. To say that the game was a critical and commercial success is an understatement. Critically, it received 251 Game of the Year awards around the world, and over 800 General Game Awards, making it the most decorated video game to date. 
Sales-wise, from the making of this video, the game has been bought 28.3 million times inclusive of DLC, putting it in the top 25 highest selling games to date. The game has the best rating from users on the entire Metacritic website, scoring 94, as well as the highest user reviews on Steam from any AAA developer at 98%. On Steam, that is only matched by Portal 2 and Half-Life Alex. With the release of The Witcher TV series on Netflix, CDPR enjoyed another post-launch boom in sales, as the success of the show brought another wave of fans into The Witcher community. We can probably expect the release of more seasons in the next two years to continue to boost video game sales for CDPR. The success of The Witcher 3 did catch one eye in particular, Andrzej Sapkowski. With The Witcher 3 raking in millions, Sapkowski took it to the courts to appeal for more compensation for his book's influence on those video games. Despite the binding nature of the original contracts, CDPR did reach out to Sapkowski, and they did eventually solve this quarrel with an undisclosed payment. I briefly wanted to discuss something that I also believe contributed to the huge success of The Witcher 3. Something else that brought CDPR into light were the two expansions made for The Witcher 3, Hearts of Stone and Blood of Wine that released soon after the main game's release. These two expansions were fully fledged stories with lots of new gameplay, quests, characters and mechanics, as well as a new region for Blood and Wine, which was Toussaint. Why does this matter? because of microtransactions. Microtransactions are an alternative mode for monetization, and generally come in the form of small amounts of content for a small price. However, the video game industry has shifted to many developers adding tiny bits of content with hefty prices added on top of games they have already paid for. Some great examples include EA with FIFA and Battlefront, Overkill's Payday 2, Sega's Total War franchise, all of Paradox Interactive's games, Activision's Call of Duty franchise, and countless other examples. This topic does warrant its own video, but essentially CDPR was praised for adding a huge amount of extra content for a very fair additional price tag. CDPR continued to milk off the success of their Witcher franchise with two more games, and each were also quite successful in their own right. In The Witcher 3, there was a minigame called Gwent, which could be played as part of many quests and tournaments in the game. It was a hugely popular addition to the game, and so CDPR rolled out a fully expanded card game based off of it. The second was Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. It was their first story-based RPG that wasn't centred around Geralt of Rivia, but rather around Queen Meave of Lyria and Rivia. This game was a prequel to the previous Witcher trilogy. CDPR was finally able to do a top-down RPG that they wanted to do ever since the very first Witcher game. This game was also awarded several times by various gaming media outlets in the genres of puzzle, story, and for RPGs in general. CD Projekt Red probably does have at least one more Witcher game planned for the future. This was hinted at by Adam Badowski, who tweeted, When the right time comes, we will begin to talk about other projects. But first, they are focused on their next release, which is planned to be even bigger and grander than The Witcher 3, and that is their new IP, Cyberpunk 2077. Cyberpunk 2077 was actually announced back in January 2013 during the simultaneous development of The Witcher 3. This was a bizarre announcement, particularly as nothing else came with it until five years later with E3 2018, where another trailer was shown. However, following E3 2018, a huge amount of hype was garnered around a 48 minute walkthrough of some aspects of the game. A glimpse of what this game was shaping up to become was shown, and needless to say, people were excited. Around 19 million people. The game also won over 100 awards just in 2018. CDPR was just getting started. 2019 was the year for Cyberpunk 2077's marketing to be ramped up. E3 2019 rolled around the corner and featured one of the greatest release date reveals of all time.
The gaming community as a whole was ecstatic and couldn't believe what they were seeing. From CDPR's 2019 financial results of Half One, they revealed how Cyberpunk's hype matched up to The Witcher 3, as well as more awards in 2019 and a huge amount of free media coverage. An April 16th, 2020 date was revealed, but there was still a lot to be done. We can't fully confirm the game's scale relative to The Witcher 3, but since November 2019, they had already spent just over 83 million US dollars with at least half a year of development still left to go. The Witcher 3's total development expenses were 81 million US dollars. As the dates came closer and closer, CDPR were awfully quiet. That is until they had to announce what everyone feared, another delay. The sheer size of the game and the pressure of the looming release date forced it to be pushed back until September 17th. But CDPR can still be admired for this action. The game was fully playable at the original April release date, but still needed a bunch of bug fixing and playtesting to be done. There is a stark contrast between this and competing games that are fully released without even being half playable. Cyberpunk 2077 is shaping up to be a massively successful title and will show how CDPR will match up to make a non-Witcher title, a first person RPG with guns, cars and cybernetics rather than swords, crossbows and potions. There is one more part of CDPR that is worth mentioning. Crunch. Rampant within this industry, crunch refers to very extensive working days and hours to complete big projects particularly within a specific time frame. Many big publishers and developers are guilty of this and it is somewhat understandable. Any project in any industry may require harder, longer work to complete it and the gaming industry is a particular key area where deadlines need to be met. But it still raised many questions. A few former employees of CDPR did complain about the high working hours and subpar wages. CDPR did at least admit that the issue was present and noted some ways to fix it, such as having a non-obligatory crunch system. Nonetheless, these are problems that the company will have to address over the coming years. Despite these internal issues, CD Projekt Red is a bastion for what the gaming industry should present more of. Companies that prioritise creative strategy over business strategy and fulfil their obligations to release fully fleshed and polished video games. They've definitely made mistakes throughout their journey, however, they have learned and become one of the most beloved developers in the industry. It truly does pay off to have the best interests of your customers at heart. And with that, the video has come to a close. I appreciate any feedback on how to make my videos better, and would love to hear any topic suggestions for upcoming videos. I shall see you again soon.